Radio Raw here with the 989 assassin, Jermaine Franklin. Here on this pond, uh, you shook the world up a little bit last time out against Dillian. Uh, I know you didn't get the win, but you feel like you got the win. Uh, how has that experience, fighting as well as you did, feeling like you got a victory, and then getting beaten on the cards, informed how you're coming into this fight on the same pond as last time? Um, well, well, last time, it, you know, I'm I'm very strong mentally. Um, my team and the fans made me feel okay about it, about the decision. But, you know, uh, this is boxing. Sometimes it happens in boxing. We all don't get fair shakes. I never really got a fair shake my whole career. So I didn't cry about it. I didn't complain about it. I just went back and started working. Well, if a fair shake isn't something you can count on, then a knockout has to be. That's the only way you can be the the decider. Yeah, you got you got to knock them out. You got to knock them out, or you got to dominate in a, in exclusive fashion. Now, this is the heavyweight division. Obviously, when I fight, uh, when I speak to Joshua, I want to be looking up. He's a towering guy. He's huge. You're about my size, but obviously a <laughs> bigger, but not as big as Joshua. Does that advantage you in the fight? I mean, he's only he's only four inches taller than me. You know, he's 6'6", six, six. I'm 6'2", six, so, you know, I've been sparring big guys my whole career. It's nothing new to me. You've been compared to Andrew Ruiz. Stylistically, how do you see the comparison? We're two different fighters. Me and Andy, two different fighters. We don't have the same style. Andy's more, Andy probably provides a little more pressure than I do. And um, he fights a little more in spurts. I try to use my jab more and, and work inside out. You feel like people who are analyzing this matchup are appreciating the performance you put last time out and what you might bring to the fight. Uh, yeah, you know, um, out here in England, they just love boxing. So they love to see people come out there and fight and give it they are. So, you know, um, I think they appreciate what I did in the Dylan fight and they're ready to see what I could do with Joshua. Obviously, Joshua coming back after two losses, most of the headlines are about whether or not, you know, he can return to former glory and how he'll look. But very little bit is about the shot that you have ahead of you. I know that you're not overlooking what is in front of you, but how do you make sure that you can take advantage of what maybe the press and maybe even Joshua might be overlooking about the opportunity ahead of you? I mean, I've I always been kind of overlooked. So, you know, um, personally, in my opinion, I just got to come out there and show them that I'm not what they think I am. You know, they they call me a tune-up. They say I'm getting knocked out in four or five rounds. So, you know, I just come in there to kick ass and show the world, like, this is not that. Some have gone so far to say, well, if Joshua loses to Franklin, he should retire. I mean, I mean, I find that disrespectful, you know, because people haven't really seen me. So... I find it disrespectful that people think that low of me. They think I'm not a great fighter. You think I'm not a good fighter. Because if you're saying that I beat Joshua, that his career is over with, how, how can you say that? You never see, you know, I just dominated somebody that had a reign on the sport for 10 years. So how can you take anything from me as a man? I just find it kind of disrespectful. But, you know, this that's the kind of sport we're in. We don't get love like basketball, football, and all the other sports. Boxing is more, you know, either you're on top or you're not. I noticed at the press conference, you guys showed each other much respect. It seemed like uh, there wasn't the usual animosity between fighters we sometimes see. How do you feel about Joshua personally? Um, you know, I respect him as a man. You know, um, I respect all fighters. You know, it's just when people talk shit, we talk it back. You know, but um, I'm, I'm a fan of the sport. I've been a fan of the sport for a long time, way before I ever thought we'd get this, this fight. So, you know... Uh, I feel like all boxers need a little bit of respect. It's a tough sport. It's a real brutal sport. And some of us don't make it out that ring. Having the opportunity to see your opponent get beaten three times, tape you can study, has to be an advantage. Is there anything that you're seeing, studying for this fight, or knowing about Joshua that is an advantage to you, that makes your style best his? I study some from the losses, but I really study everything. I like to, we like to analyze the small stuff, like, um, how's he stepping? When he throws certain punches, do he bring his hands all the way back? What does he do when he gets tired? We want to analyze everything, even the tiniest things, even when he's winning, the fights that he's winning, everybody makes mistakes. I'm pretty sure I got mistakes that they tried to look at, but everybody has mistakes and flaws. I mostly call them habits. You have like something that's kind of hard to break that you constantly do. So we we look out for the small stuff like that that we can capitalize off of. Because sometimes it's not the 
it's not the big things that everybody think about. Like everybody think about the loss with or Riaz or Usage, which Usage is a great fighter. Usage just kept turning him on angles. He won't let him get set. But you know, it's other things I've seen that we could capitalize off of. A lot of people won't know what to expect from you because they haven't seen you before. When I'm watching the fight, is there something I should be looking for? Like, okay, this is going Jermaine's way. You don't have to give me the game plan. But one thing I'll be like, uh, it's working. This is what he wanted to do. Uh, when you see him get frustrated or you see him get too happy, either or. It's going to be a huge turnaround. We don't even see Joshua get frustrated and too happy? Yeah, either or. Because <laughs> I, I know how to work it. So, you know, like... Uh, we put ourselves in the trenches a lot in the camp, so I know how to come out and I know how to work it. When the guys get frustrated, he lose confidence. When the guy gets happy, sometimes he get overconfident. And you can start to put yourself in situations you don't want to be in. And lastly, you're an assassin, but talk to me about the 989 and what it means for a guy from there to be at this level in the world of boxing. Uh, it means a lot for me and my city, you know, um, to show everybody that, you know, you can achieve big things. Um, like I always said, it's not a super lot of opportunities where I'm from. Um, you know, everywhere is kind of violent, but we got our share of it. So, you know, um, it's just good to show people something positive and show people that, you um, don't get your dreams up. You know, anything is possible. I'm sure people from your neighborhood and even the state of Michigan all over will be watching and cheering for you. Uh, what does it mean to you Saturday night for that? Uh, it means the world to me. You know, um, hopefully I'll be able to have something closer to home so I can have the support there in person. But, you know, um, it means a lot to me. I get a lot of love from back home. I get a lot of support from back home. So uh, it always makes me happy. You know, um, a real deep feeling. Well, if you win Saturday night, you'll be calling the shot. You might be able to fight wherever you want. <laughs> Radio Raw here with the 989 Assassin, Jermaine Franklin Jr.